What's up guys, this is Matthew Burns, and welcome to your first tutorial on how to make printed circuit boards using the photoresist method. Uh, first, a little introduction. The reason why I'm using the photoresist method, uh, as opposed to milling or using a uh, toner transfer method, is because I've had uh, bad experiences with both of those. Some of the problems I've had with, uh, with um, the toner transfer method, sorry, couldn't find the word, was that uh, not all of the toner would transfer to the copper clad laminate sheet uh, when I would iron the paper down onto the copper clad laminate. So I had some issues with traces not being complete and stuff like that. Then I tried to make my own printed circuit board. Um, it actually worked out pretty well. I was able to move all three axes, and it was fairly precise, but it had so much give in it when you put any resistance on the Z-axis that it wasn't able to mill out anything. Uh, then I, I purchased a CNC, the Fireball V90 from Probotics, and even though it was uh, very precise and much steadier than the one I'd built completely from scratch, it still wasn't quite accurate enough, or at least I wasn't able to get it to do what I wanted it to do. So um, that's why I decided to uh, make printed circuit boards using the photoresist method. And I actually have already created one printed circuit board before I made this tutorial. It is the uh, full adder section of the ALU for my 8-bit computer, if you've seen any of those tutorials. And uh, so in this tutorial, I am going to be uh, making the B input subtractor. That's just the name I called it on uh, my Eagle CAD software. It is uh, the circuit board that's going to invert all the bits going to the B input of the ALU, and it's going to send a 1 to the carry in of the first full adder, and that'll allow me to perform subtraction using my ALU. So that is the printed circuit board I'm going to be making in this tutorial, though for the uh, computer section, what I'm going to be showing you here in this tutorial, I'm just going to be making a different printed circuit board, like a 555 timer flasher or something like that, because I'll show you in a minute. I already have the, uh, the board for my B input subtractor complete, and so there'd be no use in me doing it again. Now, you don't really have to know what this does, you're going to be making most likely a totally different printed circuit board and so um, all you have to be able to do is follow along with how I'm making the printed circuit board you don't have to know what the printed circuit board I'm making actually does so this software here that I'm using you're going to want to download it is called Eagle and if you just open up an internet browser go to Google and search either Eagle or CAD soft or both. It'll be, I'll try and zoom in here. I know recording a computer screen with a camera is never great, but I was using some EasyVid software and that didn't turn out very well. I'm pretty sure I got like 20 viruses from that. So uh, Eagle, CAD soft, pick the first link, go here to downloads, download Eagle, and uh, whatever operating system you have, just pick whatever one, download it. I'm just using the free version because I didn't feel like paying a thousand bucks or whatever it was that they want. So I'm limited to four by six inch boards or something like that. I really don't even know the limits too well, but it works for what I need it for. So once you get a copy of that software, open it up. Eagle 6.4.0 is what I have. And uh, go here. Uh, this won't pop up on the first time for you. The only thing that will pop up will be this. Your screen should look exactly like this. So open up this drop down menu, Projects, Eagle, and um, I'm going to be making this flasher here in this tutorial. So I'm going to delete this project because I'm going to start over for tutorialing it. Um, like I said before, this is what I'm going to be using in the other tutorials, this B input subtractor. but. Um, for this tutorial so I can show you how to use this software I'm going to be making something different. So right click here on Eagle, new project, and then type in the name of whatever you want your new project to be. I'm just going to call it Flasher. So that's all it's going to be. It's going to be a 555 timer in as stable mode. Again, you don't really have to know what that does as long as you can follow along and how to make a printed circuit board. You can make 
printed circuit board for whatever other circuit you are making. Um, right click here, uh, flasher, or whatever project you have, go to new, new schematic, and now we can begin. So you have this empty page that you're going to start laying out your pieces for your circuit board on. So the first thing you need to do is actually get the pieces. So you're going to have to click on this, hold on, let me zoom out, this button right here. Add. That's how you add pieces. Click on it, and this um, frame pops up. And what you have to do is type in where it says search the name of your device uh, or your your chip or resistor, capacitor, whatever it is you're using. Though it is very uh, searching using this this search bar here is not very great. If I were to type in five 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 for like a five 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 timer it'll come up with absolutely nothing and have no clue what I'm talking about so I'm just going to say timer and if you look up on the screen here right there that's what I'm looking for and I want this one I think yep dual inline package okay and then you'll have this piece here that you drag around and left click and it'll place. So that's how you add pieces. Click add again to add a new piece. Now I'm just going to go through and get all the pieces that I need. I'm going to need resistors. Okay, resistor US uh, 7 millimeter, 7.5 millimeter. Okay, I'm just going to place these where I need. If you want to know what I'm doing here, if you just Google uh, 555 timer ask stable mode, it should be pretty obvious. It's not that difficult. But um, again, the circuit that I'm making here isn't really in the scope of this tutorial. I'm just showing you how to make printed circuit boards. Okay, I'm going to need a capacitor. And what else am I going to need? I'm actually going to need the, uh, I'm going to need, uh, an LED. We need something to light up. Otherwise, there'd be no point to this. And uh, I need a power supply, so I'm just, actually, that's not how I'm going to do this. I'm going to, didn't mean to do that there. I want to select this. Okay, you know what, so much for trying something new. Um, I'm just going to lay pads down for the power supply. So, I'm going to search for the power supply. You're most likely going to need to do this on yours, so I'll show this to you. Uh, just type pad. Okay. And um, what we want here is a wire pad. So, um... Just look through these through hole wire pads. I'm gonna get this one here, two comma fifty four dash one comma zero. Um whatever specs you need. I really don't even know the difference. It has to do with internal diameter and external and whatever, but who cares? If it's a copper pad that I could solder to, I'm happy. So uh place this somewhere on the screen here. I need one for power, one for ground. I'm gonna put one at the top and one at the bottom just to keep it simple. Then, uh, as you can see, that's not a piece I've laid out, that's just there, because. Um, I have all my pieces that I'm going to need laid out, and so the next thing I need to do is connect them. 
So you're going to want to click on this button right here. It'll say net. And then begin making all the necessary connections. So you just, uh, for example, if I wanted to connect 8 here to pin 4, I'd click right at the end of 8. And it does make turns for you if you want to not just make a straight wire. But I don't like to do that. Like, for example, if I wanted to uh, click, like have the wire follow this path where my uh, cursor is going, it won't do that. It'll just cut the line straight across. And even though it's actually not connecting with one here, it's kind of messy. So I'm just going to click here, click here, click here, and click there. Now 8 and 4 are connected. I'm going to do the same thing with 2 and 6. I'm going to connect 8 through a resistor to pin 7. And 7 through a resistor to pin 6. I'm going to connect 3 through this resistor, through this LED to ground. I am going to connect one to ground. I'm going to connect this capacitor here from pin uh, to pin two and to ground. And then pin eight, which also connects to pin four. So I'm actually just going to hook up pin four because it's closer. I'm going to hook up to power. And that is the complete circuit of uh, what I'm going to be making just for showing you how to design printed circuit boards. So once you have this complete, you're going to want to click on that thing with two symbols. One kind of looks like a chip, one looks like a, an AND gate. And uh, just left click that, and this will pop up. Uh, the board doesn't exist, create from schematic, and hit yes. So, now what you have is an empty board layout with all the pieces and all the net connections that you made. So, one by one, well first you're going to want to click the move button, which is this thing with uh, four arrows, one going in each direction. And then you're going to want to drag these pieces one by one onto the board. So I'm going to start with the 555 timer, because that's kind of the heart of the circuit. and. Uh, I'm holding down left click right now to move it around. Uh, so just click with your left click hold and right click to rotate the piece. And uh, I like to lay out these pieces so that it actually makes sense. Like if this resistor here connects to pin 3 of this integrated circuit, I'm not going to want to put the resistor over there like right by pin 6 or 7 or something. I'm going to want to put it right by pin 3. I'm going to take this LED and I'm actually going to put this LED right here. So as you can see, uh, this resistor here goes to the LED through the LED to ground. So that's why I placed it right here so this uh, resistor can connect to the LED. It's close by and the LED is right near ground. Um, pad 1 is power, so I'm going to put it right up here on top of the integrated circuit chip. Um, what else? Pad 2 is ground, so I'll put it right above pin 1, because pin 1 connects to ground. Uh, capacitor 1. Capacitor 1 goes between pin 1 and pin 2, so I'm going to orient it so it's uh, in the correct orientation, and I'm going to lay it on the board. Now we have our two resistors. Resistor 1 went between pin 8 and pin 7, and resistor 2 went between pin 7 and pin 6. So I'm going to place those two resistors there, and this is our complete circuit. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is... Wow, this is really difficult, recording the screen with the camera. Hit that there, DRC, and... You're going to want to make some changes here. Uh, go to sizes and go to minimum width. And I like to increase the minimum width to 15 mils just so that uh, I don't have any problems with traces being eaten away, though usually it comes out fine. Go to restring 
Uh, we're only making a one-sided board just on the bottom side, so I'm only going to need to mess around with this number across the row there. So bottom, I'm going to put, uh, let's try putting 20 mils actually. And same thing here, uh, 40 though for max. Um, we're not going to have any vias or uh, micro vias or anything. Distances here, actually this is kind of important. Um, all these numbers, actually you don't have to worry about vias and all, but all these numbers, wires and pad, you're going to want to switch to 15 mils. Okay, in the bottom left-hand corner, when you're done with that, hit Apply, and then Check. Now you're actually going to want to make, or have the traces uh, built, so rather than routing them by hand, which you can do, just, my bad, click this button here, and this is the auto router. So uh, the first selection, or first decision we're going to have to make is uh, the top and the bottom. Uh, this is preferential directions for the traces, I don't really care, uh, but the top, we're not even using them, so NA. The bottom, hit the asterisk, so there really is no preferential direction for the traces. Uh, for the via shape, I like to choose octagon, though it really doesn't matter if there's copper connecting your pieces, it'll work. Routing grid, you can leave as 50, and hit OK. And as you can see, it designed our board for us. It laid out all the traces and everything. So, all we have to do now is print this off on transparency paper. Um, after we change a few of the things about the view. So, go up here. And select view. Layer settings. And you see a list of things that are visible and not visible. You can see where there's blue in front of uh, a certain item, it's visible, and when there isn't blue in front of it, it's not visible. So you can click the blue in front of it to change. So the only thing we want visible is the bottom and the pads. You can uh, make everything else so it's not visible. And I'll explain what we're doing here in just a moment. Hit apply, OK, and then look and see what you've got. Now, what we're trying to do here is uh, print this exact image out on transparency paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shine UV light through that transparency paper at a pre-sensitized piece of uh, copper clad board. So what's going to happen is the uh, pre-sensitized layer on the copper clad board will be exposed to the UV light wherever there isn't trace. And so, uh, when we develop the board, all that exposed uh, presensitized material will be dissolved away. And all of the unexposed presensitized material will stay on the board to resist the etching solution when we finally etch the board. So all you want to see are the pads and the traces, because this is what the actual printed circuit board is going to look like. When you print this out on transparency, you don't want to have the box around the item and then the name 555 written in the middle. You don't want that to appear on your board, because that will cause shorts uh, between traces and problems. So that's why you only want bottom, well, if it's a one-sided board, if it's a two-sided board, you can have top uh, showing, but you can only do one at a time. You're going to have to print the top and then print the bottom and expose those separately. Uh, so you want one of the sides showing, and you want the pad showing. If it's a two-sided board, whether you're doing the top or the bottom, you're going to want the via showing as well. So once you're done with that, we are now ready to print it off. So uh, first, obviously, you're going to want to save this and call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call it Flasher again. Uh, go to the top left, File, and Print. There, you want to actually have these two selected. They might not be on yours. They were on mine because I recently have made a printed circuit board. But select black, select solid, and um, I believe that's the only other thing. You select the printer you're going to print this on and make sure you have transparency paper in. Uh, you can't expose this using regular white paper because 
obviously the white paper around where the ink is is also going to uh, or the white paper even between where the ink is is also going to resist UV light and keep the board from being exposed in those areas so it has to be transparency paper uh, one note about the transparency paper is uh, do not use vellum paper uh, I know some uh, some sites on the internet say that they've used it and it came out fine but I have used vellum paper before I've uh, tripled it up doubled it up or even just tried it uh, just one sheet of vellum paper with this image printed on it and either way I've had problems with vellum paper because it was kinda like how I explained a uh, regular sheet of printer paper would block out the UV light the vellum paper wasn't transparent enough to allow the UV light around or through the paper around the traces so it uh, took longer to develop and by the time the area around the traces was developed some of the traces were halfway eaten through so you're going to want to use actual transparency paper and uh, so you have your printer selected black solid and then hit OK um, the next step I'm going to put in the next tutorial so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time